Why are species so different? Why do some reproduce sexually and others self and others are asexual? Why are some teeny little things that reproduce constantly and others larger and that reproduce over this time scale hundreds of years? Evolution doesn't lead in one direction. There's not one hill to climb, not one optimum. And so as evolutionary biologists, what we're trying to do is figure out, well, why? Why does evolution lead in different directions and when? Can we make predictions? Can we test those predictions? When I started in this field, there was this conception that evolution was about the geological timescales and we must be studying fossils. That's not what I do. I use math to understand how evolutionary processes can work, and I use yeast to study evolution here and now. We're studying how adaptation to toxic environments, to a changing environment, is happening today, over the course, literally, of hours. We're watching mutations, watching them spread, capturing those mutations, the sequ sequencing them, and figuring out how exactly do organisms evolve when they're placed in a novel environment. We're able to really bridge the gap from looking around the world, seeing the diversity there that's around us, but then uncovering the processes using math and experiments and DNA sequencing and computer simulations, putting that all together to get a better sense of the here and now, the life that's here on Earth. Everything is evolving all the time. You can't stop evolution. And so if we want to design better drugs, if we want to plant trees in places that make sense for those trees, we better understand how genetically di diverse they are and how selection is acting on those populations. Otherwise, we make unwise decisions, and that's in medicine, in agriculture, in forestry, and fisheries.